Hi, we're going to analyze both the circuit diagram and the circuit boards. So we're going to use the multimeter, okay, in order to check and to track all these components in the motherboard. Okay, so let's get started. So the first part, as you can see, we have here neutron and the line. Okay, so in the motherboard, this is the input power okay so if we see the back of the motherboard as you see so we have here the neutral and we have here the line but why because always as you see the line is connected to the fuse this is the fuse these two terminals is the terminals for the fuse as you can see this is the fuse okay so this is neutral and this is line Okay, so if we check using our multimeter, okay, so of course we will put the multimeter in this option, okay, in the buzzer option, as you can see, okay. So, and then check the probes, so the continuity is good. So let's check, as I told to you, this is the neutral and this is the line. Okay, and this is here, this is the fuse. Okay, so if I check this, as you can see, fuse. We here a continuity. So this is the fuse. Here we have the line. So the line and the neutral, there is no continuity. Okay, the neutral is isolated from the line. So this is the line goes directly to one terminal of the fuse and then to other terminal of the fuse. Okay, so the fuse, as you see, the terminal of the fuse is connected to this terminal. This is capacitor, as you can see. Here we have the symbol of capacitor, as you can see. Okay, so here we have this fuse is one terminal of this fuse is connected to this capacitor, as you can see. Okay. So let's check. So let's test the capacitor as you, as you can see. No continuity. If you hear a continuity testing this capacitor, this means bad should be replaced. Okay? As you see, no continuity. Good. Okay? And here, of course, we have this. This is a this is a varistor. So one pin of the varistor is connected to the line, and the other pin is connected to the neutral, as you can see here. Okay? Do you see here? This pin is connected to this, and this is connected is connected to this. If we check here, as you see, we have the line, and we have here, as you see, the neutral. So this is the varistor as you can see as you see it's symbol okay this is the symbol of the varistor as you can see here so the the neutral is connected to the terminal to the first terminal of the varistor and the line also connected to this terminal okay so if you check the varistor, you should not hear any buzzer. If you hear a buzzer or a sound in the multimeter, that means this varistor should be replaced. The same principle for the capacitor. Okay? So, for this, for the varistor or the capacitor, you should not hear any buzzer. Okay? You should not hear any buzzer using the multimeter or any sound. Okay? But for the fuse, yes. You should hear a buzzer. You should find, get a continuity by testing this fuse. But for this to no, no continuity. Okay. So let's see this. This is electromagnetic interference, as you can see. So, as you can see here. Okay. This is electromagnetic interference. This is the first coil, and this is the second coil. So. This capacitor, as you see, the terminal of this capacitor is connected to this coil. And this terminal also is connected to this coil, as you can see here. Okay? 
as you can see here in the schematic okay so this capacitor as you see so this capacitor is this okay connected to the first coil and this terminal also connected to the second coil okay and as you see here the varistor is connected to the fuse okay here we don't have the CTN in this board we don't have the CTN so let's check, check these two coils we should find a continuity by testing these coils okay so let's check so this is the first coil as you can see here this is the first coil okay and this is the second coil okay so let's check these two coils using the multimeter okay so let's check this the first coil is good using the multimeter the first coil is good okay okay and for the second also good okay so as you see this this coil is connected to the capacitor and if we begin from here so if i put as you can see if i put as you can see in the schematic one probe here okay and put the other probe here in this coil i should hear a buzzer the same thing if i put one one probe here and another here i should hear a buzzer okay so let's check so this is the neutral as you can see this is the neutral and this is the coil do you hear a buzzer good so here i have the neutral and here i have the coil so all this part is good i should check this other part so uh, this is the line and here we have the coil so also all this part through this fuse is good okay <clears throat> so now we will pass directly to the rectifier to the rectifier to the bridge because in this board as you can see after this electromagnetic interference we have here the bridge rectifier as you can see the same here we don't have this capacitor in this motherboard we don't have this capacitor this is electric shock capacitor okay so let's check this so normally this coil as you can see should be connected to the anode of one diode and to the cathode of the other diode as you can see so here if you focus here this is the terminal of the coil as you can see so as you can see here do you see this is the coil okay so this coil is connected as you see to the cathode this is the cathode here we have cathode to the cathode of this diode as you see this is a diode and to the anode of this diode okay the same here we have here anode and cathode so this is anode as you see here and this is cathode so if i let's check these two diodes if these two diodes are good or not so let's check this as you see so here we have cathode so i should put here the black probe and here i have anode so using the multimeter i should get here a reading so here as you see so this is the cathode as you can see here and this is the anode do you see a reading good i should check this other diode so we have i have here a cathode and here i have the anode ready so these two diodes are good okay so the other coil as you see the second coil is connected directly to the other diodes the cathode of one and the diode of one so let's check now we check this coil with this with these two diodes as you see let's now check this coil also so i have here a coil as you see this is the cathode of one diode and this is the anode of the other diode exactly like this okay so this transformer is connected to this resistor and to this diode and to this capacitor
okay so this tree component is here in order to discharge this transformer discharge this transformer when the power is removed the transformer or this coil will keep the power inside it or the current exactly like the capacitor so this tree compound as you see a resistor diode and capacitor will charge this current because the current will pass through this diode and and then the, this resistor and then this capacity until this coil is fully discharged okay so here this 3 10 volt will go directly as you see to do transform as you can see and then also it will pass through this resistor as you see we have R1 with 470 kilo ohms okay this is a big resistor so this 300 when it passed through this resistor it will become about 9 volt until 18 volt so this voltage is the V in for the oscillator as you see we have here the oscillator so the oscillator when it gets its power as you see it will generate a drive signal this drive signal of course will pass through this resistor and will activate this transistor so this is a transistor as you see base collector emitter this transistor when it be activated it will generate as you see a frequency signal as you see in this shape as you can see so the high peak is 310 volt and here we have zero volt also the oscillator we will generate this signal as you see with a high frequency about more than more or equal 20 kilohertz okay this is a high frequency okay so this mosfet as you see the current will pass through this transformer and the power or the energy will pass to these coils and then here as you see the current will be generated and will be passed through this diode and this capacitor this is a chemical capacitor or a filtering capacitor so here for example we will get 9 volt and here the same working principle the, the current will pass through this diode and then it will be filtered through this capacitor this is a, a chemical capacitor and we will get 5 volts okay so in order to control this powers that is generated here in the output we have here an opto isolator or optocoupler so this 5 volt will pass through this resistor okay and then we will get here for example about 1.5 volt okay so this 1.5 volt as you see here this is an opto isolator or optocoupler that contain a diode and a photodiode okay and a transistor okay so when this diode get this voltage it will eliminate it and then the transistor will pass a voltage here okay okay and this value this value will go this is a feedback will go to the feedback as you see we have here feedback to the oscillator and then the oscillator will rectify and adjust this 5 volt for example let's assume that we get here 10 volt for example if we get for example 10 volt normally we should get 5 volt but we get 10 volt so this 10 volt will pass through, through this resistor we will not get here 1.5 no 10 volt means about 3 volt for example this 3 volt the light in this diode will be strong so here the value will be will increase okay that is generated by this transistor so the feedback the oscillator will adjust will adjust this signal okay and then in order to get 5 volt okay so this is the working principle as you see here for the flyback circuit diagram and of course this this is a start resistor normally this oscillator for the first time it is powered by this resistor through this resistor but when all these operations is happened this is this coil will be charged to power this oscillator as you see here so this coil as you see will power the oscillator through this diode we have here capacitor this is a filtering capacitor 
okay and here of course we will get the same voltage 9 volt and 18 volt and this resistor will stop working okay